Hi, my name is Julie Albert. I'm an assistant professor here at Tulane University in the Chemical and Biomolecular Engineering Department. And I'd like to tell you a little bit about my research on polymer thin films. So polymers are found all over in our everyday lives. So for example, the back of my chair, the foam inside it is made out of a polymer. But my group in particular is interested in working with polymer materials to advance nanotechnology and biotechnology. And so our starting point is to actually work with these materials in thin films. So what I have here is a polymer that's been coated onto a silicon wafer. So same substrate materials, the same thing that you might find on your computer, a silicon wafer chip, and we've just coated it with a film. Ideally, we'd like these films to be nice and uniform in color. That would tell us that we have a uniform thickness but I thought this one came out in a pretty cool pattern, so I thought I would share this one with you. So for the purposes of the nanotechnology applications, we work specifically with block copolymers because these self-assemble on the nanoscale. So we start from a film like this, and we can't see anything in particular um, on the nanoscale. So the first thing we would do is look at it under a microscope. So if we look under a regular optical microscope, we'll see an initial surface pattern. And then as we zoom in using an atomic force microscope, so say on the center image, which is 10 microns, that's about the width of a human hair, we can start to see what the pattern looks like on that length scale. If we zoom in even further, so now we're at a length scale that's equivalent to a tenth of the width of your human hair, um, we can actually see the nanostructure that's formed by the block copolymer. So a second area of research in my group is to actually look at how we can span these patterns not only on the nanoscale but also look at them on the micron scale. And we can do this by taking our block copolymer and blending it with two homopolymers that have the same composition as the respective parts of the block copolymer. So why do we want to go to the micron scale? We've done so much work to get to the nanoscale. Well, one area of interest for my group is in biotechnology. And so if you're thinking about cells, cells tend to exist on the order of 5 to 10 microns. So you're on a micron length scale. And so what we'd like to do is create surface patterns that the cells can then interact with all the way from, say, 10 nanometers up to 100 microns in order to understand what length scales are important for cell behaviors. One final area of research within my lab group deals with polymer crystallization. Um, we're interested in this phenomenon because many of the biocompatible polymers that you might use in a biotechnology application happen to crystallize. A good example of this is polycaprolactone or PCL. This is a really nice biodegradable polymer. You can load it with a drug to release to influence um, your cell behaviors. Um, but we would expect that the crystalline morphology of the PCL is, the, is going to affect those drug release properties. Um, so understanding morphology in order to apply the polymer to the bio application is very important. So I hope that I've convinced you that polymer research is a very exciting area of research to be involved in um, and has the chance to impact technologies in a variety of ways. Um, a group in particular is focused on nanotechnology and biotechnology, um, but polymers find uses in energy technologies as well. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you're as excited about this research as I am.